Ken Queter, <laughs> just is, is such a great part of this landscape in Philadelphia. When I first came here, I came here in 1981, and uh, before I worked in radio, I got a job on South Street uh, at the Essene Health Food Store, and uh, so I was loading 50-pound sacks of brown rice and uh, all natural yogurt into the cases and things like that. And uh, right down the street was Dobbs, so I would go and eat. And the Dobbs had a great cafeteria upstairs or a great little restaurant, cafe, whatever. And I'd go up there to eat oftentimes. And uh, Ken, of course, was a fixture at Dobbs, as was Alan Mann and all those other great uh, South Street musicians. And um, I seem to recall the label of the mayor of South Street being attached to his name. And, um, and then... Uh, then my next recollection, I got hired here at MMR and I did the overnight show. And during that process, I met this young band that dressed up uh, very colorfully by the name of Baru Review, fronted by Bob Baru. Uh, all of them great characters. And it was, uh, my process with Ken came from Baru Review and went backwards. Um, I learned of Ken through Bob who had roadied for Ken and had such respect as did Greg Davis of Brew Review and Johnny Sachs of Brew Review, no longer with us, sadly, uh, Johnny, but they um, they had played in The Secret Kids, and uh, the rest of the band had not, I think Buzz Barkley, the keyboard player, had, had as well, and they had this great knowledge of Ken and phenomenal respect, and I loved Baru so much that anything they liked, I wanted to learn more about, and that was my connection to Ken, and... Uh, in that early, in those early 80s, the um, club and music scene was so alive when I moved to the city. I mean, unlike today, I mean, you could go downtown on a Monday night and a club would be packed. I mean, it seems like now it's only maybe a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday, maybe a Sunday. But I mean, it seemed like then, you know, memory gets a little foggy, I don't know, but it seemed like then every night of the week was packed, any club that you went to. And there was a really vibrant music scene locally. And here at MMR, uh, uh, the station really started to embrace uh, Philadelphia artists. Ken earlier and the Johnny's Dance Band places, you know, bands like that, and then uh, some of the other ones that were coming up, like the Hooters and the A's and uh, Baru Review, and then later Tommy Conwell and the Hooters and um, all of these incredible bands that were really making an impact on the club scene. And the station at various times embraced various of those bands. So Baru Review, I became instantly a fan of and, and hosted a, a ton of their shows and hung out with them. And then I started filtering into Queter Vision, Queter World, and uh, and got it because they loved him so much. I said, well, if they love him, he's got to be cool and he's got to be a character. And he is both cool and a character. <laughs> I don't remember the first time I saw him live. Uh, and I don't re recall that he was... Um, a little crazy at those live shows. He was always eccentric and always colorful and always doing some different act. Um, but my early memory of him is a little foggy in terms of exactly where he was and what he did. And it seemed to me that there were two sides of Ken Queter. There was this very stately, gentlemanly uh, person that you'd see on the street and would st you'd stop and talk in the afternoon and, and have very intelligent conversations and always observant and 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 bright and then his concepts on stage were wonderful from the Elvis to the men from Wawa to every different you know secret kids in the earlier days and all the stuff that he would uh, he would do and then on the Queterology album uh, I remember loving it for he had his uncle or his grandfather there's he would tape him at the table and stuff like that so I said this guy is definitely cool but then the other side of that was uh, if he'd had a few too many beverages it was a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde phenomenon that seemed to take place in that uh, he could get crazy, um, uh, borderline right over the edge. And um, I had no idea of the other side of him. I had only seen the gentlemanly side and, and some of the colorful shows, but he had not, the things I saw never, never was he ripping the stage up or anything like that. Um, but there was a night, and I believe it was at the legendary Dobbs, where uh, after a show, I, I, he came up to me, and um, I think I was still doing overnights at the time, or, or maybe I just started on the midday shift at the time, early 80s, and um, went off on this whole diatribe of 
how he, <laughs> our program director at the time was a guy named Charlie Kendall, and he was a deep-voiced, tall guy, and he, he created this tagline for the station, WMMR Philadelphia, that we used for a long, long time, and he had this really deep voice, and he made the Philadelphia, and he very much believed in local bands and playing local bands on the radio, and gave a lot of them a phenomenal break, and... Um, so Charlie Kendall was also in charge of, you know, what bands we would start to play, what bands we would lighten up on, what bands we would increase on. And um, so Ken comes up to me at the end of some show and just starts, and I barely knew him. And the part of him I knew, again, was only this calm, quiet, intelligent, bright, astute guy. And all of a sudden this raving maniac appeared in front of me who just went off, who had just leaped covered in in flames off of a huge cliff and was coming right at me and was like this total transition had had manifested itself upon his face and his whole body language and he said i'm gonna go home i've got a gun i'm gonna go to your studio i'm gonna kill charlie kendall i'm gonna kill him i say i'm gonna kill him and i'm going let's take a breath let's just take a breath and have a chat about this because i'm not sure that that murder is a really a good soul. I'm telling you, I've got a gun. I'm going to kill him, and I'm going to destroy the station, and I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill all of you, and you're all dead, and I've got guns. I'm telling you, I've got guns. Ah! And I and it, it was such a, a, an assault on my psyche again from the other part of Ken that I knew to this, like, uh, who is this that's appeared in front of me? And um, and I go and it went on for about five or ten minutes until I was able to extract myself as tastefully as I could from the situation. And I go, well, I guess I was wrong about him. I guess he's a, f a raving lunatic. And then the next time I saw him, it was back to the stately gentleman again. And I go, okay, well maybe I just caught him on a bad night. But then other people told me of his occasional excesses, shall we say. And I think most people have learned to love him for that since that time. I actually was prepared to write him off as uh, after that encounter. And then I think Buzz Barkley, who played keyboards with Baru Review and did a lot of radio work with me on MMR, said, no, 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 you've got to understand it's Ken. And I guess that was just the expression. It's just Ken. It's just Ken. You know, and then once you, once you learn that there, you know, every one of us has a lot of different facets and a lot of different sides, but he has some, some are more extreme than others, and his, that other side of him, which uh, it may still be in existence, I don't see him that often these days, but uh, still mostly 80% of my experiences with Ken to this day are that, that incredibly, uh, you know, bright, funny, alert, fascinating guy that I have such great respect for. And occasionally there are, there's, there's the uh, <laughs> other side that appears, but mostly I didn't see that. There was a great time that I remember uh, when we were broadcasting. The stations had three locations, but our first, I think our best location, was Rittenhouse Square downtown at 19th and Walnut. And our studio opened up, and the window opened right on Rittenhouse Square, and it's a great location because there are business people there, and there are residents there. There's old and new. There's people walking their dogs, walking their cats, and everything else. And uh, there's a thing that happens in June every year called Old Newsboys Day, where people get out on the street, and the Philadelphia Inquirer puts out a happiness edition of the Inquirer and there's no bad news in it and it's a benefit for the variety club and they sell it for a buck and so a lot of radio and TV personalities around town will be out on the street in various corners of the city selling the happiness edition of the Philadelphia Inquirer to raise money for a good cause the variety club so I used to broadcast my show out there on one of these occasions and uh, was out from noon to one and we just lower a microphone out the window and uh, we'd be down on the corner and yeah, it's, it was a great spot right in the heart of the city and people coming by and we'd have people stop by occasionally and one time Ken was my guest and had stopped by and he put on the apron and he's helping us sell the happiness edition of the Inquirer and he it was really cool and he you know and he's obviously he knows how to promote I mean you know from the earliest days of putting up the the, uh, the posters and the billboards all on the, all through town um, he knows how to promote. So here we are doing th something for a very good cause. And he's, you know, waving down cars and getting people to buy the happiness edition of the Inquirer. And um, he brought his guitar. 
And so uh, towards the end of our broadcast, um, uh, he said, why don't I sing a song? You know, and all I had was one microphone. But I go, yeah, let's sing a song. So he t puts a guitar on, and he starts into What Am I Talking About? And I love that song. It may be one of my favorite. I don't know. It's got some great tunes, but uh, Marco Polo. But What Am I Talking About, I think, is my very favorite uh, Ken Queter song. And he, and if you remember the chorus, it goes, do 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 and it's so catchy and he's singing it and all of us this whole crowd of people started singing along to it and so I'm running down the thank you list of people that helped our broadcast that day and he's ba -da -da -da, and that we're spreading out into the street and doing this song and um, later and we thanked him and eventually wrapped up and later uh, one of my producers was uh, was taping it uh, and putting it onto another tape and one of the engineers came in uh, while he was transferring the tape and he said you're going an awful long time there and the song turned out to be about 10 minutes long and uh and every time he would walk the engineer walked in and out of the room while my producer is taping this and he goes oh my god oh that's really going a long time and he'd walk out and he'd kind of a very straight laced guy and come back oh he's still on oh my god oh that's very unprofessional very unprofessional oh my god and he walks out and he comes back and we're still on with a do 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 and the engineer looks down at my producer and goes, there's nobody listening now. Nobody. Nobody. Done. But it was great. Queter rocks, I will tell you that. And he is, a, he is I would say he's a Philadelphia treasure. He's some, someone that the city, um, that walk of fame down on Broad Street in front of the Academy of Music, he should be on that, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it should be... He should be brought there in a ceremony by a, a group of the most colorful mummers that can be found, uh, you know, and there should be sky riding above, you know, in the skies of Broad Street saying Ken Quita rocks because he is a Philadelphia treasure. He is someone that the city should be proud of. If someone watching this film has not seen him, go see him. Uh, he can be found singing and carrying on his craft, his art, his uh, tradition, his storytelling. He's a minstrel from the earliest days. He is uh, a character. He is a delight. Uh, he's got a take on life that everyone should, uh, should open his book and look in for a while because you'll get something great out of it. He's a phenomenal man, and I uh, can't speak highly enough of him. He rocks. Ken Creter absolutely rocks.